the date is September 7th, 2011 on this Wednesday edition. We've got a lot of news and information to cover, but first let me tell you about some of what's coming up tonight. Uh, we're going to talk to advice columnist and uh, best-selling author Amy Alcon coming up a little bit later. She dared to complain and cry and call it rape when reportedly the TSA um, didn't just grope her vagina but went inside of it, pushing her clothes in. And now, uh, reportedly, they're trying to serve her with papers uh, and demand letters and threatening to sue her for exercising her First Amendment and saying that she was sexually violated. By the way, I've had uh, district attorneys on from major cities who say that what the TSA is doing is sexual assault. Even if the feds say they're above the law. That's coming up. Then we're going to talk to Michael Allison. He's the guy up in Illinois facing 75 years or life in prison. He's 41 uh, for filming and taping police in public. And the states come down to the town and says, yes, let's put him in jail. And 11 other states are behind it saying, put everybody in jail, life in prison. That's coming up. Then a true lawman, a true peace officer who's won his fight for the Second Amendment all the way to the Supreme Court, Sheriff Richard Mack, will expose just how criminal these globalists are with the latest on Fast and Furious, the false flag attack launched by Obama against the Second Amendment and a destabilization operation against Mexico. They've got thousands of people's blood on their hands, and they've been caught red-handed. But first, I want to get into some of the news a little closer to home. Central Texas, the worst fires in recorded history have struck after a five-year drought uh, has brought us to basically, in many areas, desert-like uh, conditions. A lot of the grass is just dying in Austin and is now sand. Uh, well, um, FEMA has done what they've done in Arizona and so many other areas. They showed up two days into these fires that have destroyed over 150,000 uh, acres just in one area uh, alone. Uh, well over uh, 1,200 homes, deaths. The farmers, the ranchers were getting together protecting their land. FEMA came in and said, no, you can't build fire berms. Firefighters from all over the state poured in. FEMA showed up just like in Katrina and said, no relief effort. Uh, we're going to come in in the next few days and command things. And all they're doing is blocking the operation. I've now confirmed with multiple firefighters uh, that this has happened, that they're even trying to go on people's property where farmers have successfully built fire uh, walls uh, with dirt and are telling them, nope, you get out of here. So just incredible federal power grab. And I've got these newscasts where the locals are begging for the free FEMA goodies that are coming. And then I thought I would play a clip uh, of Aaron uh, Bruchard out of one of the parishes that bordered New Orleans and he first broke the news and was later confirmed. He also broke the news that the feds were in there shooting people inside New Orleans who tried to peacefully get out. Uh, he broke the news that FEMA came in and jammed communications as the storm hit. Then a day later, hacked up with axes the communication lines so police couldn't communicate. Then they all wandered off in different directions. And FEMA said, see, it's terrible. And waited six days to bring any aid, but began confiscating guns within two days as we covered last night. So this is a anti-American, globalist, power-grabbing sabotage group that does not want states and locales being able to protect themselves and always blocks any aid effort so they can then say, oh, look, we screwed up. We need more funds. We're going to go to that clip. 30,000 acres in size so far. It's so big, in fact, the smoke can be seen from space. At least 500 homes have been lost in Bastrop County, and at last check, that fire was 0% contained. Another separate fire west of the city of Bastrop called the Union Chapel Fire is 1,000 acres in size. It is 10% contained. Now, we just learned that FEMA has authorized some funding to help fight the Bastrop County fires as well as some of the two dozen other fires burning across the state right now. Sir, they they were told, like me, every single day, the Calvary's coming on a federal level. The Calvary's coming. The Calvary's coming. This is the New Calvary's Orleans. Calvary's coming. I have just begun to hear the hoofs of the Calvary. The Calvary's still not here yet, but I've begun to hear the hoofs, and we're almost a week out. Let me give you just three quick examples. We had Walmart deliver three trucks of water, trailer trucks of water. FEMA turned them back. 
They said we didn't need them. This was a week ago. Uh, FEMA, uh, we had a hundred, we had a thousand gallons of diesel fuel on a Coast Guard vessel docked in my parish. The Coast Guard said, come get the fuel right away. When we got there with our trucks, they got a word. FEMA says, don't give you the fuel. Yesterday, yesterday, FEMA comes in and cuts all of our emergency communication lines. They cut them without notice. Our sheriff, Harry Lee, goes back in, he reconnects the line, he posts armed guards on our line and says no one's getting near these lines. Sheriff Harry Lee said that if America, would have, American government would have responded like Walmart has responded, we wouldn't be in this crisis. But I want By the way, um, there's other interviews where for seven days they wouldn't let police and the thousands of volunteer firemen and others get in and get the old folks in... Um, the, the different hospitals out, and of course hundreds died. And it's an exercise of power. Can they shut down a lemonade stand? Can they arrest you? Can they stick their hand down your pants? Can they grab your genitals? Uh, can they get away with whatever they want? That's what's going on. That's what tyrants do. And because they know they're bringing their system into its end game, they're announcing the world government in Europe after collapsing their economies, a new private corporate union under the bankers, the end of European sovereignty through financial slavery. It's all about total domination. So they've got to break our will now. I got news for the globalists. and I know they've been noticing uh, it's not working. You, you, you misjudged who we are. This is, this is not North Korea. I'm sorry. It's not working. Uh, and there's a lot of rebellious people that don't want to be slaves, and and the sleeping giant is uh, just now waking up. Now, finally, uh, in the news, I want to get to this report by Kurt Nimmo. Video game allows frustrated libs chance to kill Tea Party opponents. Now, we're not liberal, we're not conservative, we're constitutionalist. But we've seen Hoffa, the head of the unions, calling for violence a few days ago. We've seen the unions beating up Tea Partiers. Uh, we've seen just endless calls for violence by the so-called left and then all these bizarre ADL Southern Poverty Law Center reports and endless pontificating about how myself and Ron Paul are calling for violence via code when all I see is calls by the so-called left for violence and so we're gonna roll some of this uh, for you here uh, that's a guy with American flag gotta kill him that's a good old boy evil white redneck uh, and, of course, another white person who's a Klan person. Being, being white's evil. Uh, Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman are evil subhuman demons. A Fox News chick. Uh, Newt Gingrich. By the way, they're not right-wingers. He's a big globalist. Uh, you've got Sean Hannity, Britt Hume. And these are corporate zombies. There's, there's, there's Glenn Beck. Uh, there's Britt Hume. Uh, they've all got to be killed. And, and this is all part of the dehumanization. And my issue is they'll say, well, this is just art. Uh, we're just having fun. Okay, then don't run around squealing and talking about how everybody wants to use violence against you all day when nobody's calling for that. The left ought to be happy. Obama's launching wars, putting al-Qaeda in command in Libya, uh, torturing, getting rid of the Bill of Rights. He's continuing what Bush did. Fox News, MSNBC, you keep the false idea going that there's a choice between you two. Two different flavors of liquefied horse crap, okay? I don't want either one of your flavors. This is all part of perception management, giving you two false choices. It's like going on a used car lot and they say, well, you can have this used car or that used car. You know what, I don't like any of your used cars. I'm going over to the next place, okay? You're not, again, they wanna keep us all fighting with each other. The TSA sticking their hands down all our pants. They're putting sodium fluoride in all our water. The vaccines are hurting us all. The deindustrialization that both parties supported, NAFTA and GATT, is screwing us. It's time to get angry. And let me tell you why I'm angry. This next report ought to get everybody angry. I've seen them grab men's buttocks and go between the crack and check what's in there. I've seen them, and they describe it as lifting off the ground, going into a woman's labia. I'm sorry for a family show, but that's what's happening. And, and, and up into their body, to, to, through the pants. Let me see what's in there. And they also go in the pants. And then a well-known author, uh, uh, Amy Alkin, I'm so angry about this. It happens to her, she breaks down crying. Pilots have, have thrown up and cried. It's humiliating to men. I don't want somebody doing this to me. It's humiliating. You either cry or you get angry. I understand it. You cry for America, it's disgusting. 
This is insane. It's like people going into gas chambers in Nazi Germany, just accepting it, or going to those pits, being shot in the back of the head and accepting it. Fight back. Speak out now. They're trying to break your will. Now they're threatening to sue her, and she thinks they're trying to serve her. I talked to her about that, uh, and we're going to talk to her more here in a moment. They're trying to come after her for her First Amendment and saying she believes this is right. Well, I've interviewed district attorneys. And they say, you know, FBI agents can't do this to you. That Yes, it's sexual assault. So it's a new level of intimidation. And with more on these horrors is one of the latest victims. We've already seen Miss USA crying and saying that they put their fingers into her private area. With more on this is one of the latest victims. She's a syndicated uh, advice columnist. She's a author and researcher. And of course, uh, she has gone through quite a bit of hell and is now being uh, threatened with a lawsuit uh, for daring to criticize uh, the individuals that put her through this nightmare. Amy Alcon, thank you so much for joining us on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for having me. So break down what happened to you and uh, now what it's basically uh, come to. Well, I went through, I was at LAX. I was going to an evolutionary psychology conference in Binghamton, New York, and um, I usually don't buzz at the metal detectors, but um, at United, they were searching every person getting on a plane. Not searching, they were body scanning or groping every person who gets on a plane. And um, I am very passionate about our Constitution. I really feel grateful to have all these rights. Nobody in anywhere else in the world has the level of rights we have. And then also, I mean, I don't want to be touched in my most private places by a stranger. So I started to get a little teary-eyed. And then I thought, I thought about it and I thought, these people, these people who are earning a living violating our Fourth Amendment rights do not deserve our quiet compliance. Now, you know, I can sort of hold back my tears and everything and be a tough cookie, but I thought they don't deserve it. So I started sobbing and I sobbed as this woman searched me, this TSA woman. Now, it is my opinion, I can't prove it, but that she did this to be punitive. What she did, like what happened to Miss USA, she took the side of her hand and she stuck it in my vagina four times. They go up one leg and then up the other leg. She did it four times. Each time she jammed it up there. And I was so shocked. And I was already sobbing and had intended to sob. But I didn't understand that a crime would be committed there. I thought, you know, the government allows the I considered a crime what they do already. They're groping your breasts. There's no probable cause. There was no sign that I would be meeting with Al Qaeda, you know, in Binghamton, New York. I was interviewing some anthropologists. And undoubtedly, undoubtedly, this is a giant power grab. It's about yeah. setting the precedent. They're now announcing they're going to be on the streets of America doing this. I have two daughters and a son. We can't travel. Because my children, like any other small children, ages eight, uh, seven, and three, especially the little ones, they get upset around strangers. Uh, sometimes they don't know. They come over and grab your leg. That's normal instincts. Uh, and, and, and children cry when they're drug away from their parents and grope. Babies have their diapers taken off. And it's this bizarre behavior. And, and you're one of the only other people that I've seen out there that's really gotten what this is. Uh, at your advice uh, column, advicegoddess.com, you wrote, TSA searches obedience training for the American public. And that's actually what this is. It's about setting a precedent to get into our bodily person. Now they're announcing, hey, don't worry. You want to take your shoes off. We're going to have high-powered MRI systems that are many times a chest X-ray beaming you. And these poor TSA people, and I say poor people, it's now come out, they're getting massive increases in cancer because they're living basically inside of an x-ray machine. But, but I'm digressing. So you get up to the point, you're crying, uh, you're telling her you don't like it. Uh, well, I mean, what happened, I was just sobbing. I mean, it was so shocking to me to not only have what is the standard be done to me, but have this woman go really far. And someone on my blog this morning said, oh, you're a drama queen. A woman like you makes this up. Well, I was just in New Orleans. I also got groped. I also cried. And what I wonder is why doesn't everyone else cry if their constitutional rights are totally violated? But in that case, I didn't scream you rape me because she did the standard thing where they go up your leg. She did not go into my vagina. 
which is just obscene and horrible. So I screamed, you raped me, you sexually violated me. I called my boyfriend. I was terribly upset. And um, then I blogged about it when I got home. And I blogged this woman's name. Because I don't think if you do this, you're wearing a name tag as an emissary of the government, that you get to be scot-free about it, that we need to name the people who are committing crimes against us. And I think anybody who works for the government searching you without probable cause, by the way, is a criminal and should be named. It's not just somebody who goes much further like this woman did, as I believe, in a punitive way. And that, that was my, that's my belief, that she intended to punish me for not going quietly and being one of the we the sheeple, like so many people who go pleasantly, compliantly, and politely. Well, we're talking to one of the latest in a long line of victims, uh, advice columnist and author, Amy Alcon. Uh, Amy, you know, there's so many facets to this, but an FBI agent can't walk up in a park and stick their hands down your pants or even on the outside. It's, it's a felony. Uh, it right. is sexual assault, and it is confirmed. Last year when we first started exposing this, they were even doing this to young girls and boys, um, the, the TSA came out and said we weren't telling the truth till all these videos got released. They are ripping colostomy bags off old men, uh, urology bags. I hate to get into all this. They are t making women take out piercings that are in their breast with pliers themselves. They are laughing at people. Uh, they are asking women out for dates. A bunch of them have been busted being pedophiles. And, and the social engineers know that if they can get away with this, they can get away with with uh, anything and the nightmare just goes on and on and then they always say oh miss usa is being extreme it's not that bad well i've been with jesse ventura the former governor of minnesota working on his tv show with him and i've watched him saying this is why i spend most of the year in mexico this is east germany and now he will not fly so he has to drive around in a, in a rv for the next season of it i'm getting to where i won't fly we're about to buy an rv right, right before we went live here I was in there looking at used buses and RVs uh, because of this. And then they say, oh, you know, you should get over it. In any culture in the world, this is insane. Uh, you know, in, in Ventura's lawsuit, and I watched it happen to him, they went into his butt cheeks, and that's what his lawsuit says, and actually start checking. Let me make sure there's nothing in there, like it's a prison check, and start Ron Paul, a congressman's talked about it. He's a medical doctor. They grab his genitals and squeeze them. Uh, and, and men and women describe this as being lifted off the ground. They go in to check. They make women go and take tampons off. I'm sorry to start ranting here. It's just no, that I, this is really so important. this is so insane. And, and and in closing, and then I want to get your comments on it. Uh, uh, then they try to deny this. You know, first they said we're not on the outside of the pants. Then we're not on the inside. I have witnessed them go in the pants, and the pilots last year said, we're quitting, we're not going to fly anymore, so they stopped it with them. Grown men were going and throwing up, and people said, oh, don't be a wimp. Look, being sexually violated, having people touch sexual organs when you don't want it is the ultimate violation. It's a form of serious torture that they use it on people in Abu Ghraib. I'm sorry, but you're a victim, and now they're trying to persecute you, which shows what type of just terror the TSAR. We cannot go quietly. And the thing is, this is absolutely a power grab. And the reason we know this, this is security, not security. The TSA has not stopped one terrorist attempt on the United States. The only ones that actually were stopped were stopped by accident or by passengers, like the panty bomber whose detonator broke. I mean, and there is nobody who is going to take out a box cutter and bring down a plane because those big American men are going to take that guy down or that woman in the case that it's a woman. So this is all about making us docile. So when we have our rights taken in other situations, we're quietly compliant. And my question to everyone is, why aren't you all sobbing at the TSA? Why aren't you all screaming and crying? We have this Constitution. We benefit from it. You don't get to sit there and watch as, it, as it's ripped up at the airport door. Well, Amy, uh, Alcon, let me throw this at you uh, just real quick. I talked to a young woman today, and now I'm talking to other people and confirming uh, this is happening. An entire family was basically put through the body scanners. They made this woman do it twice, it, a 17-year-old. It, 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 it failed, so then they groped her. And the family was all sitting, putting their clothes back on, their shoes back on, they left the area, and a TSA walked over, she described, with his hands behind his back uh, like he was a Nazi officer and said, are you angry? And they said, well, no. 
and he said, good, because you are being watched and clicked his heels and walked off. So it's this new harassment. Oh, you didn't like us touching your genitals. You didn't like us sticking your fingers uh, into your buttocks to make sure nothing's in there. You didn't like it. Well, guess what? I'm trained to pick out thought criminals just by looking at you. I mean, this is so Orwellian. It, it, and, and then, it really I'm sorry, go really ahead. Is. And you know, they have, they have this, um, I don't have the exact code. I, I don't think I can find it right now. But they have this code that says you can't say anything. You can't be, um, you can't speak up. You know, you can't do anything to sort of um, make the process not go easily for them. Well, is our First Amendment gone now too with the fourth? Is that the next to go? And the way this woman is Look, suing me because I named names on my blog. I mean, it's absolutely Well, I mean, crazy. is she suing you yet or is she threatening to sue you? No, I'm sorry. It's a letter of demand right now. So she sent me this letter of demand, but I have to say, this morning at my gate, I had a sweet old man my landlord hires to do the mow the lawn, and um, somebody tried to get past him and actually was impersonating a police officer. I think he said, "I'm with the police." Um, I can't quite remember because I was all upset, you know. But the the guy didn't let him in, the gardener didn't let him in, and I said, "You know, don't let him in, don't let him lock the gate," um, you know. And so I think they're trying to serve me now. Well. They're going on the offensive. They've come out against Matt Drudge, Big Sis has, and she says, there's nothing Orwellian. You're just flat wrong. And they tell Congress, there's no radiation. And then we get this test, and they're not even following federal law on radiology, and there's huge cancer clusters. And, and, and what they're building is they're building an army of people that will do whatever they're told. And I've talked to TSA agents. They've come to rallies I've had in Austin against the TSA. And they say, look, I just wanted a job. And then slowly they get you indoctrinated. But they said now they call you behind closed doors and say, are you worried about radiation? Are you not wanting to touch genitals? And if they say yes, they say thank you. And then two weeks later, pink slip you. So what they're doing is building an army of people that will do whatever they're told. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really disgusting. I was going to add that I read Napolitano came out and said the scanners, they've been tested to be safe. And I think it was Johns Hopkins came out and they said, well, no, actually, we didn't say that, they, that we tested them, to be, tested them to be safe. You know, there's all this stuff that comes out, and there's something recently that came out, I think through EPIC, EPIC, saying that, um, that the scanners were not even meant to be used on humans. And it's so crazy, and people are just going through them. People think that the government will protect them. And as a libertarian and a civil libertarian, and somebody reads the paper all the time, I know that that's not true, and it's increasingly increasingly not true. Well, and it's worse scary. than that. They, I now have video from Fox News in upstate New York and Tennessee where they have National Guard under TSA command with huge roadside scanners that are industrial because they've had them on the border for decades, and, and they roll your car over rollers. The, the, the Border Patrol is in armored lead buildings with cameras and they run cars through looking for drugs or, 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 or other things. Now they just have them on the side of the highway and have families drive right through them, and they're roughly 100 times more powerful than a chest X-ray. So insanity has gotten into the federal government. Amy, uh, the, the uh, blog, uh, of course, is something everybody uh, should, cert, uh, uh, should visit, advicegoddess.com. Uh, people should certainly stand up for your First Amendment. Uh, they're probably going to try to intimidate you and get you to settle, uh, and they're going to technically say, you know, doing our duty is not rape uh, when the government does it, but I think that you just demand a jury, take it all the way, and say, is someone, uh, and, and they admittedly do this, I don't know about your case, but I do, I do know that they, they go up into the, the, the labia and they do, you know, check to see if anything's in there. This is the beginning of cavity searches, and if a cavity search uh, is, is is not sexual assault, uh, then, I, then I don't know what is. I mean, this is a new precedent where we don't just microwave you, but, but, but we're going to give you uh, a, a cavity search. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And wrong. And I, I just urge people, if anybody gets anything out of what I did, I'm just a little person. I just want to, I'm, I'm concerned about the whole, and I want people to, to get the message they need to speak up. When their rights are being violated, don't take them for granted because we're just a few steps away from a police state if everyone starts doing that. Oh, I, I think we're a few hundred miles deep into a police state, and it, it's getting more and more insane by the minute. And, and, you know, a lot of these TSA people have been basically indoctrinated into this culture where they think 
that what they're doing is okay and good, and, and it's painful for them when people are upset and cry. Um, and it should be. And you know what? They do not deserve, when you're, it's like the Germans that said I was just doing my job or whatever they said, you do not deserve to have a job like this, to earn money like this, violating people's rights. Just I following orders. Job. Pardon? Just following my orders. Right, exactly. In New York, I worked as a bike messenger. I worked as a substitute chicken handing out flyers on the street. I was a mover. I'm not, look, I have the arms of an eight-year-old child. I mean, I had terrible jobs because I didn't have any money, but I for sure wouldn't take a job, no matter how well paid, where I was paid to violate people's rights hour by hour, day by day, take home a paycheck 40 hours a week. And how can you be proud about that? Well, what's crazy, so Amy, is what comes around goes around. They're in there with the scanners, scanning the luggage being radiated. That's been coming out for 30 years. And they're now radiating you, but they're the ones that are cooking and just laughing at us isn't going to protect them. The T it turns out internally the TSA is freaking out. Every time I fly to Austin, they want my autograph, other parts of the country. There's some of them that just want a job and are upset. There's others that are on power trips, uh, but, but we've got to stand up against them, and I salute your courage, and we're going to watch this case uh, as it develops. People should go to your site and uh, buy copies uh, of your uh, latest book uh, to support you uh, because you're obviously under attack. God bless you, and we appreciate you spending time with us. Thank you very much. And thanks for what you do. We'll continue. Well, well, we'll either hang together or hang separate. Thank you, Amy. We're going to go to break now, ladies and gentlemen, and come back uh, with a, another big move in the police state. Mr. Allison, the gentleman who recorded and videotaped police at public events and told them he was and is now facing life in prison in southern Illinois. And you may be thinking it's just a boss hog small town. Well, think again. The state prosecutors have come down and they say, yes, we think this is reasonable. Life in prison if you film us. And we've talked to people on the street in Austin and ran into a cop from Europe who told us that he thinks it's reasonable as well because he doesn't like being videotaped. So life in prison. You will have be found right at the front lines in the Info War, Info Wars Nightly News. Learn more and subscribe at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. Now, Sheriff... Richard Mack is coming up a little bit uh, later, but first I want to get into this report uh, dealing with the IRS. Now I first saw this a few years ago in England being proposed and now in the U.S. that your paycheck be put automatically in a bank account and the government's already snooping on your bank accounts without warrants and that they take out the amount they want in withholding so your employer doesn't even have to do it. But now they're going one further. They're saying, we're going to watch your bank account in live time because you can't be trusted. You're guilty until proven innocent so that the private uh, uh, Federal Reserve can have its collection agency, uh, the IRS, quote, do your taxes and assess it for you. Now, they already gone pretty much all the way on this six years ago when they changed laws, where now CPAs are liable to the IRS for everything they do. And the tax code is so Byzantine that you've got a, uh, Forbes has done, Forbes magazine, and so is money. They'll have 20, 30, 40 uh, different tax accountants, depending on the year, do somebody's tax return and get 30, 40, 50 different answers. Everyone is different. Well, now they just say, don't give people any loopholes. Don't give people any waivers, even if it's in the law. Those are only for the elites. And the CPA says, sorry, I'm not going to do, do your taxes. Then if you do your own taxes, then they come and audit you. But again, the big mega banks are all exempt. So it just goes on and on and on. Now, if you get angry about local taxes or them hauling off your perfectly good automobiles that are running because they want to sell them, well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get 75 years in prison. Some people are serving five, seven, 12 year terms in 12 different states. The police are going to videotape you all day, but you don't video and audio tape them in public because they're God, they're king. And so we're going to be looking more at the case of Michael Allison. You know, there's few things that make me speechless, but my God, is this country not becoming Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany? Thank you, Alex. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. 
The First Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled that it is not illegal for citizens to videotape police officers when they are on public duty. After all, they are public servants, and we are all protected by the First Amendment. But the ruling hasn't stopped police from arresting people anyway, even though they know full well that the charges won't hold up in court. All right, well, we're talking about the fact that the, the police are starting to arrest people, put them in jail for videotaping them with their cell phones and video cameras. And uh, do you think it's fair that the police are doing this, even though they're allowed to videotape you with their dash cams and other recording devices, yet they expect us not to be allowed to videotape them? What do you think about that? I don't think it's fair at all. Uh, first of all, I, I believe it's contrary to the First Amendment. If they're able to record us, then we should be able to record them. It's only fair. There needs to be checks and balances. I don't want, I don't trust them. I don't trust them. It's always us getting in trouble because they have the cameras on us. But when the camera's on them, it's a threat to them because then they know that they could get caught very easily doing something they're not supposed to. It's very selfish of them. And as a, a member of society, I, I feel threatened by that. When we did the research for this report, we discovered that there are literally hundreds of court cases, federal and state, where the cops are arresting people for recording them with their video cameras and cell phones. In the case of 41-year-old auto mechanic Michael Allison, the Illinois Attorney General's office is determined to make an example out of him to intimidate the public against filming the actions of police. Allison faces a life sentence on five separate counts of eavesdropping charges, and that adds up to 75 years behind bars. 75 years behind bars. A prison sentence that long is rarely handed down, and it's usually just for murderers or rapists. But a local man faces 75 years in prison for a nonviolent crime. What he's accused of doing is something many people have done, but most don't realize it's actually illegal. Now, what kind of person do you think would justify putting an innocent man behind bars for 75 years for videotaping police officer on public duty? Obviously, some person who's not doesn't treat everyone fair. I don't think that's reasonable just for recording them. Putting someone behind for 75 years is ridiculous. It comes, it's just, it just makes no sense. So don't you think it's time for police and prosecutors to start get, getting indicted yeah, for this kind of behavior? Be, yeah, definitely. I feel like it has to, it should be equal. Just because they got a badge doesn't make them any different from us. Yeah, if anything, they should be the ones targeted with illegal conduct. Yeah, exactly. what, what I want to know is where's the Constitution in all this? Where's the First Amendment in all this? When you see a police car in your rearview mirror, <laughs> Do you feel safe or do you feel threatened? I feel threatened automatically. Uh, when I see a cop in the rear view, it, it used to be where I felt safe and I, and I, saw, uh, I felt protected. And now that's not the case no more. Now I feel targeted. Now I feel harassed. I, I don't feel safe at all. The charges against Illinois auto mechanic Michael Allison and other cases like his clearly demonstrate just how far the authorities are willing to go in their efforts to eliminate the rights of citizens and to prevent them from documenting the abuses of police and other government officials. The good news is that these types of cases are being thrown out of court all across the country. However, the bad news is that the police are continuing to arrest people as a form of intimidation. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Back to you, Alex. It's like I've woken up in a alternate dimension where the police film us, but we can't film them, where you can't have lemonade stands, where they're arresting people trying to sell tomatoes on the side of the road, where Gibson Guitar has been told move out of the country, officially in court. But really, it's not the twilight zone. It's not the outer limits. This is what happens in every culture when you let control freaks take control of society. When you don't defend liberty, that precious jewel that Thomas Jefferson talked about, you are delivered into the hands of tyrants. And it's happening on every front. It's getting wilder and wilder by the day. Now, the gentleman we're about to talk to is Michael Allison. And uh, of course, a few weeks ago, it made international headlines when the police on record said, yeah, we're going to put him in jail. We're, we're charged. He's been charged 75 years or basically life in prison. He's 41 for filming and taping them at public events. Now, to, 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 to break down what happened, give us the backstory and the latest developments is Michael Allison. And remember, this isn't just some boss hog town. They have sent the big state attorney to try to back this up and say, yes, 
we back the other 12 states that are now doing this, and they, and they misinterpret this law for wiretapping. Uh, this just has incredible ramifications. Uh, joining us again is Michael Allison uh, on the phone. Michael, thank you for coming on, sir. Thank you for having me on. Well, for TV viewers, we've only got about eight, nine minutes. How did this start? And you've now been arrested twice, and they're going forward with it. Life in prison. They're very proud of it. Uh, and you, you, you have a lawyer that's come to your defense, but you also need a lawyer to get on the offense, which we should. I mean, falsely charging somebody and trying to throw a businessman in jail for life for, for taping police in public and letting them know you are. My God, none of us are safe if this is the case. Uh, things have gotten a lot worse than I even thought that this is, that this is happening with such enjoyment and gusto, like you're not even a human. Uh, break down what happened to you, Michael. Well, uh, basically, the, the whole situation started with uh, a, a, an alleged ordinance violation that the uh, local uh, towns in these two counties uh, uh, basically have in place, and uh, the, the uh, enforcement of those ordinances uh, violated my right to um, uh, uh, carry out my hobby of choice of restoring and, and uh, repairing and rebuilding classic cars. Well, that's I'm almost on. as bad as wanting to eliminate Stan or a garden in your yard and folks facing 93 days. So you tried to get in the way of some good officers, some good people. Uh, you probably don't, you probably don't like North Korea and dictators uh, either, do you? No, I, I don't. Uh, I don't care much for communism. Uh, I, I prefer freedom. Well, uh, that's why uh, you're an American. Uh, but uh, please continue. So they were telling you you couldn't work on cars uh, and uh, at your house and, 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 and so they towed them off. Yeah, the, they illegally seized the cars uh, whenever I, I refused to uh, comply with the ordinance, and, and I was challenging the ordinance uh, to give me a day in court, which never came. And uh, they, they came onto my private property while I was not even home and illegally seized two of my uh, three cars that were on the private property. And uh, their, their ordinance is, is basically worded and and uh, in place, basically, uh, the, it's under the false pretense that they're eliminating junk cars from from private properties in in the city limits, and uh, the, they're not using it to eliminate junk cars because I had three cars, uh, two of the cars were in real good shape, and I already had the motors rebuilt and restored, and the third car had been wrecked, uh, the wrecked parts had been dismantled. And while it was sitting there, the car had been vandalized. And, 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 and this is a s small town. Uh, in a lot of cases, they're now even annexing rural areas and telling old farmers they can't have tractors. And, and so now you start going to court with them. You start wanting uh, to interview them. You start wanting to tape them. They wouldn't give you a court reporter. You wanted to tape it. You told them. They arrested you there. Uh, again, that's all you know, classic small town uh, boss hog behavior. But, but you're facing life in prison now, so, so that's the big issue here that everybody is really concerned with. So tell us about the arrest and the life in prison and the state coming in and saying, yeah, Michael Allison, recording people in public, telling them he's recording them. He's life in prison. Uh, whenever, whenever the whole issue about the ordinance stuff uh, uh, led into discovering that these people were running a, a vehicle theft and extortion racket, and fraudulently converting titles to stolen vehicles, and I, I uncovered that and discovered it through the discovery process of my lawsuit that I filed against the city of Bridgeport. And uh, after I had found that out, uh, the the people in the city of Robinson, which is the next county to the north, in Crawford County, uh, they, it's a, a retaliation tactic uh, to try to keep me from being able to expose those scam and the racket that they're running. My point uh, is that all hasn't been found and proven in court. Uh, I'm not I'm not doubting what you believe has happened here. I just can't prove it. What I can prove, and it goes to their character, is with a straight face, they want to put you, a guy with no criminal record, upstanding in the community, that's all admitted, in prison for life at taxpayer expense for publicly recording them and telling them you are. Uh, and, and we see cops all over the country. You're filming them beat somebody 200 yards away. They come over, they beat you, charge you with eavesdropping, uh, wiretapping. I mean, this is insane. 
Uh, First Circuit courts ruled it's constitutional to film police in public. It's common sense. I mean, the system is on a power trip. Uh, you know, they're now sticking their hands down women's pants, pressing through the pants, men's pants, p kids crying, Miss USA crying. They think that's normal. Amish being arrested. Uh, I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, we're living in the twilight zone here. America is dying in front of us. But specifically, tell us about the court case, where it's going, uh, and, and the uh, state attorney coming down and saying, yeah, the state's fully behind this. Uh, the, the last court date that I had was August 18th, and uh, the, the, it was a, a hearing for uh, pending motions, a motion to dismiss based on the fact that the uh, statute I'm being charged under is unconstitutional. And the assistant attorney general from uh, Chicago came down to, uh, uh, to uh, basically defend the constitutionality of the statute and say that the the statute is constitutional. Despite and, the fact uh, that circuit courts all over the country and state courts, federal, have said this is ridiculous, of course you can record and video police in public. I mean, it, 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 I mean this is well established, 110%, that that's how when you're walking around Times Square, they put you up on the big jumbo TV, everybody that walks by. You walk in a right. store, they're taping you. The police pull you over and are taping and audio taping you. I mean, and, and, and again, the way they're interpreting it, if police are doing this to you, they they could get in trouble. I mean, this is insane. And and, and are these uh, different bureaucrats and police? I mean, are they proud of themselves when they arrest you? Oh, I believe that they they really thought they had me backed into a corner, and and uh, they they were pretty proud of themselves uh, whenever this first started. But uh, I think that the uh, tables a little bit turned on them uh, unexpectedly. And uh, whenever I decided to fight back and, and not just cower in a corner and, and uh, plead guilty to some lesser charge. Well, that's what always uh, happens to bullies. You know, growing up when I was 10, 11 years old, I got beat up a lot. And finally, when I went into puberty at about 12, testosterone hit, and I started, you know, fighting back, you know, the kids three years older than me, I'd pick up a rock, smash it over their head. Wow, they got, you know, blood spewing out. This isn't funny anymore. They'd start squealing and run off and call the cops on me. Uh, but, you know, that's where this is going, and America is waking up. I, I'm, I'm here to tell you. And the bully's answer is to put even more pressure on us. Uh, but people like you are going to restore the republic, Michael, because I don't know about your whole boss hog story. Sounds like par for the course, standard operating procedure. You know, I've seen similar things and things far worse. Hell, here in Texas, the cops on the news admit they pull over old ladies and take 500 bucks out of their wallet. You got proof that money's yours? Well... Dallas cops throw bags of chalk in the back of your car, take your car, charge you with cocaine. The crime lab frames them. That's admitted. Cops don't get in trouble. So, so I grew up in Rockwall outside Dallas and watched the police steal the drugs and then go on TV and talk about fighting them. So, so I know how corrupt things are and that it's growing, but the fact that they've gotten so confident that they want to put you in prison for life uh, when it was at public places... I mean, this, this, and you told them you were taping them. Uh, I, I welcome this type of abuse because it's really going to illustrate how out of control this system is. It's only when the thugs think they've got us that they really tip their hand. Do you agree, Michael, that they're starting to tip their hand? I, I do. I, I think that they way overreached, and uh, that the, the fact that they were in, a, in, the, in the mindset of pure retaliation uh, clouded their judgment to the point where they they, they way overreached and, and set this whole thing up. And because it's a, a, a set-up scam and there, it's all bogus and there's nothing legitimate about it, they are bound to lose. Well, I know in a lot of areas the wreckers are always the brother or the cousin of the judge or the police chief. And you, you were telling me it's basically the same story. How, how many cars are they uh, snatching out of people's uh, backyards or driveways? Uh, I, I, since this has been in place for years, uh, it could be thousands. And uh, like in my case, uh, that took place in Bridgeport, they took my two valuable cars, and and they did it under the ordinance, under the the authority of the ordinance, and they left my car the, that uh, would be considered by them to be junk. They left it behind. It was the one that didn't run, had been wrecked, and uh, so they're using it to steal. Wow. Uh, uh, wow, uh, the most valuable cars. And and and, and, and so you started standing up to him in court, and and 
and started interviewing them and recording them and uh, outside of court and other areas. And they just said, that's it, buddy. You're going to prison for life. Well, I think the fact that they took the running cars is a big illustration of what, what we're dealing with. Now, in closing, when's the next court date coming up? Uh, the the last the last court date that I had was the, on the August 18th uh, uh, date. Uh, the judge uh, said that he was going to read and reread the documents that had been submitted, and left the uh, date uh, the next court date open ended. Uh, I actually don't have a a court date uh, yet. And so imagine the, a judge going, "Gee, I wonder if you can take police in public." Duh! I wonder. I wonder if we've got any freedom in America where we got to pay Al Gore to breathe. And uh, I want to tie this in with the last guest and the next guest that's coming up, Sheriff Richard Mack, a true patriot, a true peace officer, uh, with you, Michael Allison. Um, we had an advice columnist on who said that the TSA went through her clothing into her vagina. And I've actually seen this on the news, the video of it uh, with other women. Uh, I've seen it uh, myself with, with men. They go into the, the butt crack and, and press the pants into the anus. Uh, that's in Jesse Ventura's lawsuit. I mean, he will not fly. He's at, in, in private seething with anger. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, he was like Yosemite Sam after I watched it happen to him. Uh, and uh, he, he was calm when it happened, but once he got through, he was upset the whole evening. Uh, and, and, and I mean, he's being traumatized. The pilots, a lot of them would throw up after this happened and refuse to fly. What is your view of this new power grab and now the move? They're talking about suing the woman who dared talk about it. Yeah, uh, the, I, I have, have refused to uh, step foot in an airport ever since uh, all of this uh, anti-American behavior started. And uh, I refuse to subject myself to it, and any American shouldn't be forced to. And uh, what, what are you going to do when they st and they're now doing it? Start setting up checkpoints, and you pull up to them uh, with their uh, 50 cal machine guns on mounts. The rest of it, they're going to go through all your goods. They're going to take blood out of your arm, and they may even uh, put on the glove and go inside. They're now announcing that. It uh, it sounds like it may be time for revolution. However. Anybody might think that that uh, might might be taken. Can you imagine uh, George Washington if he came back in a time machine and saw him like uh, fondling women and small children and taking people's cars out of their yard and and uh, microwaving people and arresting Amish? What do you think George Washington would think? I, I think the founding fathers would, would would not even believe their eyes of what's going on with, with the, what they created. Hell, Michael, I'm not a founding father, and I can't believe it, and I grew up in this crap. Hey, listen, God bless you. You're a great American. We're standing with you, and if folks want to contact us for a civil uh, litigant lawyer in Indiana that you're nearby or uh, the crime syndicate state of Illinois, uh, we'll uh, get them in touch with you. Michael, God bless you. Thank you for having me on. You bet, my friend. There goes Michael Allison, restoring the spirit of 1776. We're going to go to break and come back with the final segment of InfoWars Nightly News with Sheriff Richard Mack, ladies and gentlemen. You'll definitely want to stay with us on this because I'm going to talk about Fast and Furious, the TSA uh, groping gangs, uh, and police arresting people for filming them and folks getting thrown in jail for it. This guy facing life in prison. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Info Nightly, Nightly News here Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then we restream uh, the show when it ends until I go live on the radio the next day at 11 a.m. Central. And then, of course, we start restreaming again at 7 p.m. Central. So, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Coming up in a few minutes, we're going to be talking to Sheriff Mack, in fact, here in just one moment. But this whole Fast and Furious case, the corporate mainstream media is trying to get us to focus on little, little side issues, not the drugs being shipped in by the ATF, that's on record, not the guns being shipped all over the country to drug gangs to knock out their competition, that's being ignored. You know, I've interviewed Daryl Issa, I know Daryl Issa, I hope that he's the real deal on this, but you know, political parties like to protect each other. And the fact that they're busy talking about, oh, we're assigning new prosecutors because the attorney general can't be trusted to go after people that they set up in Fast and Furious, that's all a distraction. That's all a diversion. This is really all about blaming the Second Amendment for the carnage in Mexico, which the White House is still going ahead with, even though they got caught launching this false flag against the Second Amendment. With more on this incredible case that could bring down Obama and his organized crime syndicate, 
is veteran peace officer Sheriff Richard Mack. You know, he, back in the mid-1990s, took his Supreme Court case against uh, the Brady Act, uh, violating our Second Amendment, all the way to the Supreme Court and won. And it's a landmark case uh, pointing out the true power of the Tenth Amendment and the states. But I wanted to talk to him about Fast and Furious and some of the new uh, developments there and the fact that the Attorney General has been caught uh, perjuring himself uh, repeatedly and where he thinks this is going. But first, we're going to cover a couple of other uh, big police state issues. Sheriff, great to have you here with us. Hey, thanks a lot, Alex. It's always good to be with you. Do you ever feel like that you're living in some weird alternate dimension because arresting Amish for selling, you know, tomatoes and milk, uh, kids being arrested for lemonade stands, Gibson Guitar told uh, to leave the uh, country, TSA going in the pants of people now, folks being uh, charged and facing life in prison for videotaping and taping police in public. I mean, uh, is our government trying to go beyond North Korea? Do they think they're God? Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically come to that. And, and you failed to mention the other one in Florida. Uh, the police are telling uh, the news media they can no longer have scanners. So this all fits into the picture that you're drawing. Uh, for your audience right now, that it's it's so out of control. It's everything to protect the government, and yet nothing to protect the Bill of Rights or the people. And this should be very alarming to everyone in America, not just Alex Jones listeners, but everyone in America should be getting on board, listening to your information, because this is now affecting the mainstream of America. Sheriff, what do you think? I mean, you warned about this 15, 20 years ago. It's now all come true. I hope the next chapter doesn't come true. But Obama and FEMA are now calling it the federal family, I guess like La Cosa Nostra. And, and they're saying we've got to circle the wagons against the people. So they're almost taking that distorted thin blue line and now making it the federal family line. Right. And there's a book that even brings that out called uh, The Sovereign Individual that was written by a couple of mainstreamers. Uh, out of New York. Uh, it was actually published by Sh uh, Simon and & Schuster. And it, it makes that very claim that you have, that the only thing closest to the Casa Nostra or the mafia in America is our own federal government. And they even cite specifically the IRS. But it's gone, the, the IRS is not any longer the only one that gets to play the Gestapo. It's all of them now, and yes, it is Eric Holder. And it's amazing that Eric Holder would be now responsible to call for his own arrest. <laughs> it's incredible. Now, I want to get into Fast and Furious and, and, and the fact that it's a smokescreen. It's all of it. They're talking about, oh, they screwed up. It's now admitted that in, into states all over the country they were shipping guns. Uh, they weren't just shipping them into Honduras and Mexico, but, but we're going to get to that in a minute and why you think they did it and where you think it's going. But what about Mr. Allison facing life in prison for videotaping and audio taping police in public and, uh, and, and and 12 states coming out and officially saying we're going to arrest you including news media if you tape us i mean there's no perception of privacy how do the police videotape us the only time that uh, we could not videotape a police officer is if he was in his own home uh, if he was off duty and in his own home Every time that you're outside of, of your home, if you're in the public's eye, it doesn't matter if you're a cop, it doesn't matter if you're a barber on Main Street. If you're in public, I can videotape you. I can photograph you. I was just in El Salvador, a, a third world country, two weeks ago. My son is videotaping in this marketplace and a police officer came up to him and told him he could no longer take any pictures in this public setting. Has the United States caught up to El Salvador, a third world country that doesn't have a constitution, that does not have a bill of rights? Where are we at in this country, Alex? Uh, you know, I I'm sorry. Any cop who thinks he cannot be photographed or videotaped while he's in uniform doing his supposed job, then he has turned in to the real enemy. Any chief of police who thinks that's okay in America should be fired and charged criminally for violating his oath of office to uphold and defend the Constitution. Well, Sheriff Mack, uh, how did it get to this where they openly come out and now in 12 states, it was just nine a few months ago, 
and are officially saying, we're coming after you. And they're even getting convictions. Most of them get thrown out because people know their rights. But poor people and folks, they're actually getting juries to send people to prison. And now they say, we want life in prison. I mean, even in North Korea, I don't think you get life in prison for videotaping. I mean, uh, are, are, are they drinking or snorting uh, some type of hallucinogen? I think, though, you have to really look very closely at the entire Obama picture. Uh, this has been happening. Uh, we knew what he was when we picked him up. No, no, he said in Missouri, uh, it was on the news, if you criticized him, the police said we're going to arrest you during the campaign. Yeah. Well, again, the American people, if indeed uh, they did this, but it looks like it. I mean, he still gets flocks of people following after him, even now that he's been so destructive to America, so destructive to freedom, so destructive to our foundational documents and our foundational principles. Uh, he's still getting people to flock behind him like he's some sort of rock star. And I find that the scariest thing of all. It's, it's okay that we'll have stupid politicians, but to create an entire country that has been so dumbed down, and you've called this also through the educational system and through the political system, we have all uh, followed along way too long. And it, it's, it's absolutely astonishing That's right. that we allow this to occur in this country. And it, it's no longer the right-wing whack jobs like they call you and me all the time. These Now there's people that are really waking up in the middle of the road in this country. I just hope it's not too late, and uh, I, I'm, I'm really uh, worried about our country. It, uh, it, please, it can't be too late. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, I have a little bit of power in my own life. In fact, quite a lot. You, you have a lot of power. People all over the country listen to you. And with that, I feel a great responsibility uh, to, to try to really get things right and to and to be fair about things. And I know as a peace officer and then as a sheriff, you know, you've talked about it, it's a serious honor, a duty to exercise this power in service. How do police get in a mindset and prosecutors and state prosecutors to sit around and straight face go, we'll put a guy with no criminal record, a family man, because he stood up to us and, and videotaped us, we're gonna put him in jail for life. Let's go ahead and do this. I mean, that is so, alien uh, 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 to, to freedom. In, in fact, the average criminal isn't that nasty. This is a vile wickedness that just, just, just is, it, it's hard for me to believe that in 12 states they are proud of it and, and go on TV. I, it, it, it's so mind-blowing. How could the ATF ship tens of thousands of guns into Indiana, we now learn, and, and in Florida, and armed gangs, and, and, and let Sinaloa group, it's now in mainstream news, ship the cocaine in by the tons and, 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 and run murder for hire. Well, I guess they're just criminals. I mean, at the end of the day, they don't even think they're cops anymore. I mean, is that it? These are just outright cr Nazi criminals or Soviet jackboots? It, it's, it's simply this. They're, they're officers of the state. They are state police officers. They are part of the police state in America. And, and as you said, I've been warning against that for 20 years. Uh, even in my first book uh, it, that I wrote in 1994, the last chapter is about that very issue, the police state. And w we've gone now uh, far beyond that. But we have sheriffs and chiefs of police who are now all being uh, trained by the federal government. And the SPLC is making sure that the federal government and all these other police agencies are trained to be, be like this and that they should be afraid of anybody who believes in the Constitution. Well, that's it's, my question, because you travel all over the country and speak to huge, you know, huge crowds of people, a lot of police and others. On average, are they criminals who know what they're doing, or are they delusional that, well, this guy, Mr. Allison, isn't a human, we'll put him in jail for life to send a message because he videotaped us in public. I mean, how do they not think of him as a human. Uh, I mean, are they just on mentally ill power trips? This is, it, it all comes down to what I've said in my book also is Nuremberg. This is just the Nuremberg mentality. It's the SWAT team mentality that happened in Arizona and all across this country that the uh, Department of Education now can call out a SWAT team to collect uh, fees. Uh, not because anybody's committed a crime, but on a, on a civil matter of just a mere collection. This is happening everywhere, Alex. And, well, as and you said, it came, it came out that was illegal, uh, where they are now sending Department of Education 
with a local SWAT team for bills, and they bust in without warrants. It's like launch wars without Congress, gun laws without laws, uh, super Congress to create bills now. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, look, it's happened. The republic has fallen. We can always restore it. But do you agree with me that for all intents and purposes, the executive has been turned into a dictatorship? I'm not saying Obama won't leave, but the office itself. And we need to just go ahead and admit the goose is cooked. And the, I think the establishment knows that we are waking up. And so they're just going, hey, the velvet gloves off. You're right. We're narcotics trafficking. Uh, murderers, and this is the way it is. And if you videotape us or stand up to us, we're going to put you in prison. Right, and I've said that before. It, it is that we live under a democratic dictatorship, uh, and it's very little democratic. I mean, but democrat democracy is still mobocracy, and so we have a mobocracy dictatorship. And as long as Obama could get some of the masses behind him on these things, fine. But I also said I called America. The democratic dictatorship under Bush, and uh, the only thing Obama has done differently than Bush is to take all the things Bush was doing wrong to the tenth power. It's the same program. It's the same spending. It's the same wars. Uh, it, it is. It, it's all of it is absurd, un-American, unconstitutional, and cops are trained just like the Nuremberg defense of just following orders. And that's the huge problem in America. And the court found that they could uh, be hung for following those orders. Now, I want to spend a few minutes on, on Fast and Furious, the reason you're here tonight. Uh, he, it's come out he lied to Congress. That's admitted. Uh, the head of the ATF had to step down. They've shipped guns all over the U.S., not just Mexico. Um, and I have a letter put out in April 2nd, right after they got in office, 2009, and he said uh, that they launched a new Project Gunrunner operation um, and that was going to go on in the border. So here he is on record directing it, as the ATF had said. Now we've learned eight other agencies, Coast Guard, FBI, DEA, uh, uh, were uh, all involved. Uh, what do you make of this? Uh, I, I mean, isn't this another sterling example of how governments will stage false flag terror attacks? I mean, this is a staged event. Uh, against the Second Amendment, is it not? Well, uh, it, it is, and uh, that's exactly what it was meant to do. And this is nothing new. Staging these types of events, Jap uh, Japan did it during World War II against China. Uh, this is nothing new. And what th this all is, to put this into perspective for your audience, everyone needs to know that this scandal is bigger than Watergate. This is the biggest scandal in American history since the assassination of JFK. The reason being is, now Watergate got a lot of attention from the press, and the press actually brought down Richard Nixon. And that was about the CIA now admits weakening the office of the president for the bureaucracy to take over. Not saying Nixon was good, but the point is it was an inside stage deal to set him up. Sure, of course it was. And and Nixon uh, Nixon's only crime was trying to cover it up afterwards. However, no one was killed in Watergate. It was a stupid political burglary. Republicans breaking into the Democratic headquarters in the Watergate Hotel. Who cares? This one is a president and a, an Eric Holder administration literally running guns down to Mexico and other places in the country, putting them into the cartel, Sinaloa being one of them, and then those guns being used against innocent citizens in Mexico. Mexico has no idea that this even happened. So America, the, the American government, the Obama administration, I'm not going to call it American. It's not American. It's the Obama government breaking international law, staging an event to procure public sentiment against the Second Amendment because he knows he can't do it openly. So he had to take a backdoor approach using Hillary Clinton and Eric Holder and their own ATF and Agent Dodson, John Dodson from Phoenix, actually blew the whistle on this. And he said, how is it that this is going on when I was assigned to stop guns from going And now America? we've learned that domestically it was about blaming the Second Amendment and their own speeches show they were already saying we got to restrict the Second Amendment because of what's happening in Mexico going back two years ago. They've been caught. But, 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 but Sheriff Mack expanding on that, 
Now we're learning that Sinaloa, this came out in federal court, it's in the El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune, that they were allowed for five years, going back into Bush and under Obama, to ship cocaine in, and that indeed the guns were going in to knock out the drug cartels' competition that weren't laundering their money through U.S. banks, and we have Wachovia Wells Fargo caught laundering the $376 billion. I mean, right there, this shows you just how dirty this government is. Uh, it's been dirty for quite a while, and uh, yes, that has happened. And uh, all these rumors about the CIA and others being the biggest drug dealers in the world is now coming to light. And now we have the ATF joining the CIA in being part of the drug trafficking worldwide. Another reason why we need to understand that the drug war policy in this country has been a huge failure, and anyone who continues to support this kind of policy has their head up their rear so bad it's not even funny. Well, I just tell young people, they say, oh, don't do drugs, you know, they're, they're cool and everything, and Hollywood promotes it. No, it's what a loser does. It's a, it's a tax directly to the offshore banks that set up our CIA and, and run our country. Never use drugs. Never, never, never. You want to defeat the New World Order, never touch them. Uh, Sheriff Mack, we appreciate you joining us. Give out your website and uh, uh, comment basically on that little booklet you've got. I always love those quotes. I know I, I, I didn't warn you beforehand uh, for this live interview here, but um, I uh, love that quote from your Supreme Court case that, that you put in that booklet where they, again, enshrine that, yes, we have states for a reason. They do exist. Well, that's true, and thank you. Uh, SheriffMac.com, you can get all my books there, but the, the cheapest one is just a little $2 booklet that you mentioned. Is it fits right into your uh, shirt pocket. It's a pocket-sized booklet called The Victory for State Sovereignty. And this case is the one you mentioned earlier, is the one I took to the U.S. Supreme Court, won a small-town county sheriff defeating the, the Clinton administration at the U.S. Supreme Court. And in it, it says that states we have held, however, are not subject to federal direction. And it gives the answer to the solution to the tyranny and corruption going on in our country today, and it's county sheriffs and states and local officials standing against the federal government. All right, Sheriff Mack, thank you so much for spending time with us. I look forward to having you in studio since you live here in Central Texas. Oh, that was the last point I had in my notes, and then I got to quit because I keep going over on the show, and we're getting it ready for mainline TV, and we've got to you know, keep it at least in the 30 minutes, then we can go into special reports after that if we want, but uh, right now I might just turn this into a five-hour show the way it's going. Uh, it was confirmed by firefighters I talked to and also in the Gonzalez paper, the Gonzalez Canon, and now we've learned more. Mike Adams, uh, who lives outside Austin, experienced this. They are trying to block not just firefighters that have come in to help. FEMA is, just like Katrina. They are trying to block farmers from building their own uh, fire firewalls. And they're just basically letting it burn uh, just so FEMA can set the precedent for a power grab. I mean, is there no end to how destructive these people are? Well, we already know how corrupt FEMA is and the rest of the federal government, but uh, Senator Sylvia Allen, state senator in Arizona, said the exact same thing happened in Arizona during the, the uh, wildfires near her home uh, in the uh, Sholo Snowflake area uh, of about three or four years ago. That I remember were, that when FEMA blocked it. Exactly. Same thing, Alex. This has happened before, and now it's happening in Texas. Same thing. And, and, and so first they take our National Guard away and federalize them and say, uh, now you got to ask us for help because your National Guard are off literally growing opium in Afghanistan and other places. And then they come in and, and, the, and the locals don't go, well, no, we'll take care of it. And they go, no, no. And then they grandstand. It's incredible. I mean, there's no end to these people. The people of Arizona actually went to put the fires out themselves and they were blocked by the federal government for being able to do so. So they were not a, a allowed to save their own land. And even local fire departments were turned away from saving the land in Arizona. No, no, I'd forgotten that was all over the news three years ago. Oh yeah. It's just, they, they just repeat. Nothing new, nothing new, Alex. Uh, all right, Sheriff Mack, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, my brother, see you soon. You bet. What a great guy. It's so good to know there are good people out there like him. And I know there's a lot of good police left in America. They're trying to purge you just like the military.
we got to stand together. Uh, I want to just thank the crew for another great job tonight. I want to thank all of you, the PrisonPlanet.tv members. We couldn't do this without you. If you're watching this uh, on YouTube or all the other uh, TV channels out there, uh, you need to subscribe at PrisonPlanet.tv if you want to support true alternative news and information. We're just getting started. You know, this is, uh, we'll be a week into this uh, tomorrow. And we're going to be here five nights a week. We are busting our hind ends and our brains uh, to, to break all this down and, and, and try to put a defense up against tyranny because uh, it is coming in like a flood. I mean, everything we've covered tonight, there's no need to review it. And, and there's, the problem is there's just so much more. It's, it's endless. There's just a lot of control freaks on power trips that think that they're our God. All right, well, that's it for InfoWars at Nightly News. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, please spread the word and please su subscribe at PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. I'm Alex Jones from the front lines of the InfoWar, signing off.